Welcome to Psalm 81. The Lord leads Israel out of Egypt. It begins, I'll read a little in Greek, Istotelos, Iperton Linon, Salmos to Asaf, Agalias de Totheo, Tovoitho Imon, Alalaxate Totheo Yaakov. To the director, as it generally has, I changed this for instead of far over the wine vats because I believe it might have been had to do with the harvest of the grapes, it's my guess, and they sang. It was a psalmos, a psalm to Asaph, attributed to Asaph, and we'll see later. Again, this is for a future time, uh, that it, as far as it, when it was written, it wasn't written by the first Asaph at the time of David, but later we'll show you why I think that is the case. Uh, exalt to God our helper. Shout to the God of Jacob. Both of those, exalt and shout. And uh, the God of Jacob, well, the God of Jacob is our God, the Christian's God. He's still, he's the God of Jacob. He's Jesus, and he's the God of the Christians, uh, the Christians, the true believers. And here, the God of Jacob was a person, and then he became Israel, renamed, and then Israel was synonymous with the country. But exalting and shouting. Well, I grew up in a church that originally they didn't shout and they didn't exalt. It was sort of uh, da, da, singing the rote songs every Sunday, the same ones, and they weren't very exciting. Um, wah, da, da. And um, I walked by a theater when I was a young kid. I th- must have been less than 10 years old. And all these people in there were making a lot of, I don't want to say noise, I hate to use the word noise, they were loud. (laughs) And so I went in there and I realized that it was some type of a religious service, but it was nothing like the religious service that I had uh, attended and was attending for all my young life. And then I asked my mom who, who these people were, and she said, well, they're holy rollers, That's what they called them back in the 1950s or 40s, maybe, the Holy Roller. Well, I'm a Holy Roller now. I came to the Lord, back to the Lord in 79 at a musician's fellowship, and they were exulting and shouting out loud. And, oh, man, to me it was so much better than just doing a rote uh, same thing and hymns that a lot of times the words don't even make sense in modern day. Two, take a psalm and utter a sound on a tambourine. Here's the first orchestra, I think. So we got a tambourine, a tympanon. We can add that to your English derivatives book. We have a timpani. It's a type of a kettle drum. A saltirion, a psaltery, and we have the psaltery today, but it's nothing like the psaltery then. The psaltery today is a is a um, uh, a bow instrument made in Appalachia in the um, early 1900s. And harp, yes, there was a harp, uh, another stringed instrument. And then trump, uh, in the new moon, I put instead of during, in the new moon, a trumpet in a well-marked day of your holiday. So now we have uh, the trumpet. So all those musical instruments. So churches that don't want to have musical instruments, just is not biblical. God wants this. He's saying, trump, shout, uh, exalt. For the well-marked day of your uh, holiday. For it is an ardor to Israel and a judgment by the God of Jacob. Well, where is that? It's in Leviticus 23, 24, it says, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, The seventh month, day one of the month, will be to you a rest, a memorial of trumpets, a holy convocation to the Lord. He made it 
a testimony among Joseph during uh, his coming forth from out of the land of Egypt, Joseph's coming forth, a language which knew not he heard, which, uh, which he knew not he heard. There should be a he in here. Uh, now, I th- it's talking about he made as God, so I would imagine it's he heard, a language which he heard not uh, he heard. Now, exactly what that means, the Jews spoke a different language than the Egyptians, I'm sure. They had their own language. So, uh, but God basically hears. He removed his back from tribute. That is, his is here, not he removed. Is God, his is Israel's back from tribute. He didn't, he didn't have to work. Uh, when he went out into the wilderness and his hands uh, were enslaved to the hamper and his Israel's hands were, they were slaves, enslaved. In affliction you called upon me and I rescued you. I healed, you heated you in a concealed place uh, of the gale. Now, here, I mean, well, whoever's writing this, he talks in the first person, but then it goes into God speaking. Uh, in affliction, you called upon me. So here God is saying this. That's quite a amazing thing to think about it, that no place in the world that I know of in history has, well, that I know of, has God spoken through man. And he spoke, speaks here in a way, it's written down, but that's the form, figure of speaking. And so that was something that's to me, is very amazing that God would uh, talk and speak through people. Now, that church I went to, uh, when I came back to the Lord, I felt that the man was, the Holy Spirit was speaking through him. And then... In affliction, you called upon me, and I rescued you. I heated you in uh, the concealed or a concealed place of the gale. And I believe that's a figure of speech. He heal, heeds us even in the tough times uh, that we need to be heard. Pause. I tried you at water of dispute. That was uh, a place where Moses struck the rock twice and where God told him to speak to the rock, but he struck it. But it says in Numbers 20, 13, this is the water of dispute, for the sons of Israel were reviled before the Lord, and he was sanctified among them. Uh, Israel was complaining, and Moses had enough of it, and he struck the rock, and then God uh, rewarded Moses for striking the rock by saying, well, you're not going to be able to go into the promised land. It's not a reward, of course. Hear, O my people, and I will testify to you, O Israel, if you should hear me. And, of course, that's a condition, if you should hear me. If we should hear God, then he will act. But if we don't listen, then we may not Find out what he has to say, and we'll miss it. There will not be in you a God newly made, nor shall you do obeisance to an alien God. Uh, so not to go and take the gods of the nations that were in Canaan when they went in to, uh, after Egypt. They went into Canaan. You're not to make a new God or do obeisance to one that's already there. For I... Am Kyrios, O Theosu, the Lord your God, the one leading you from out of the land of Egypt. Widen your mouth, and I shall fill it. God will provide. But my people did not hear my voice. So now it changes. Where they? When did they do this? It doesn't say, but I think this is way later, uh, during the last of the kings. And Israel heeded not to me. And I sent them out according to the practices of their heart. Now, Israel, 
if it was literal, the northern ten tribes were taken by Shennacherib, the Assyrian king, and were scattered throughout the, his kingdom. They shall go in their uh, practices. If my people heard me, if Israel were gone by my ways, not the less would I have humbled their enemies. And upon the ones afflicting them, I would have put my hand, if they would have listened, if we listen. Otherwise, we're vulnerable to being attacked by the enemies. The enemies of the Lord lie to him, uh, and their time will be into the eon. Who are the enemies of the Lord? Well, in the Old Testament, we had the false prophets who spoke lies uh, about what the Lord said, lied to the people and to the kings. They were enemies. Then there were people that sought power, like Korah, and people that followed him, uh, where the earth opened up and swallowed them. He wanted to take over from Moses. And then in Jeremiah 46.10, enemies are the nations that the sons of Israel went into Canaan uh, to uh, push out of the land the Jebusites and Ammonites, all the different ites. And then in Ezekiel 35, 5, it has Pacific nation of Mount Seir. And then in Isaiah 9, 11, it says the enemies are the ones that are rising up against Mount Zion. They're enemies of God also. Micah 7, 6 says a son... For a son dishonors a father, a daughter rises up against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The enemies are all the men in his own house. Now, was Jesus' brothers uh, his enemy? To a way, in a way they were. But in Luke 19, 27, it says, Furthermore, my enemies, those are the ones not wanting me to reign over them, lead them here and butcher them in front of me. And this is the um, parable of the king, I believe, and um, the uh, figure is the Pharisees or the enemies and the Jews that didn't believe and do the things of God, of Jesus. Romans 5.10, enemies, it says, For if, being enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son— How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be delivered by his life? So there it's intimating that we, in our time before believing in Christ, were enemies of God. Philippians 3.17 says the enemies of the cross of the Christ. So whoever is against believing that Jesus died and rose Again, the cross of Christ is also this is the death and resurrection. And James 4.4, 4, whoever therefore should want to be a friend of the world stands as an enemy of God. So if we care more about the world than the things of God, then we are enemies of God, he says. We have to look at ourselves and figure out if God sees us, which way he sees us. 1 Corinthians 15, 26, it says, The last enemy cleared away is death. The enemies. And their time will be into the eon. Now, does that mean here on earth, or does that mean in Hades? Well, I believe it's a second. Mel, there's going to be enemies to God probably forever, too, in the eon. And then it ends up in 16, and he fed them from out of the fat of wheat, and a, uh, and he filled them from out of a rock with honey. Well, fat of wheat, wheat doesn't have fat as such, but the wholesomeness of wheat, I suppose you could use that as a figure. And then uh, it says in Deuteronomy 32:13. And he brought them unto the strength of the land. He fed them produce of fields. They nursed 
honey out of the rock and olive oil out of the solid rock. It's a figure of the land that was flowing milk and honey. It uses that term, flowing milk and honey, many, many times uh, in the Old Testament for the land of Israel. And I look at us, uh, he feeds us. The rock is Jesus. And um, I believe it says that in the New Testament. I forgot to look that up. We are, the manna from heaven is uh, the word of God. We live on the word of God. He fills us up with it. Psalm 82, the judge as a God. We'll find out how the judge is as a God. If you listen, come to see the next, uh, listen to the next video seminar. Hope you do. Till then, God bless.